Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Azure Masterclass. I'm Connor, and today we're going to be providing you with a basic overview of virtual networks, virtual machines, and Azure Bastion. Let's get right into it. First thing that you're going to need for almost any resource in Azure is a VNet. You can see I've got it in my recent services here, but you can search for virtual network or VNet and just go straight into that. You can see we've already got a couple of things here, but if we just go straight ahead and create a new one, none of these resource groups are one that we'll want to use, and we do want it in the court subscription. But if we just create new, and naming wise, we'll go with RG Stark naming wise effectively the same just make sure that you've got something obvious defined something that fits your name and style it's always good to have a defined naming convention for any of your resources obviously we know that it's a virtual network but being able to quickly see anything that's attached with vnet and the company or resource group that you're gonna have it assigned to vnet start next now you can choose your ip address space so you can have a bunch of subnets within your virtual network but they all have to come from the address space that you create so if for this one we say that we do 10 10 8 0 and we do a slash 22 which gives us a availability for a few slash 24s then we can add in the next subnet so if we were to add in just one that's generalized for the entire corp range and we'll choose the first slash 24 for that so that is 8 0 slash 24 and we can leave the rest of that as default because we don't need a NAT gateway or service endpoint at this stage then you can add another subnet in, say you wanted to add Azure Virtual Desktop, AVD resources, then you can add, you know, a slash 25, slash 24, if you're going to be having that many machines ready for them to be deployed. But one thing we're definitely going to need for this video is a Bastion subnet. When that's configured, you actually need a subnet specifically named Azure Bastion subnet, and that's what picks it up and allows it to generate and work through with the configuration in the back end. So if we just choose one that's in the slash 22, I'll go for 11, and it's got to be a minimum of a slash 26 with the five reserved addresses we've got 59 available for Bastion and the minimum requirement is that it's a slash 26. Again, no NAT gateway or service endpoint needed there. So we can just go straight ahead and add that. Turn security, obviously we can look to deploy the Bastion host now, but we'll run through that shortly when we've got a VM deployed. Um, but for now, let's leave the rest as default because this is just a basic overview. When you get to the view and recreate, it will do a validation. You can see that everything looks fine for that. That will only take a minute or two to create. If we go to that resource, you can see all the configuration that you've got here. You can see the subnets that we've got that we've just created and the available IPs in them. So next thing, let's add a virtual machine into this network. If we go ahead and create a new Azure virtual machine, we'll create a new resource group as well. So we want star rod UK South 01 and the virtual machine name. We've already got one test VM, so we'll just do a second one, the same name, we'll just do start test 02. Keep it in the UK South region, zones one, that's fine. Um, security type, there's a lot of benefits to having the trusted launch virtual machine, which now seems to be the default option that Azure are throwing at you, but it also doesn't have some features that are required for some businesses. For example, you can't set up Azure site recovery on any, any VMs that are built as trusted launch. And you know, if we wanted to do some Azure site recovery down the line with this test VM, then we'd need it in standard anyway. But just for the purpose of this, we'll be going standard terms of image we just want the windows server 2022 um, and size we'll run it at b2s because it doesn't need anything special here you're creating your administrator account so this is the local administrator of the machine when it's built that you'll be able to log in with so i'll just quickly create that with a password you don't want any public inbound ports because you don't want your VMs accessible publicly. There will be scenarios where you want a public ip on your machine um, but for the purpose of this it's not necessary in terms of the OS disk, we don't need a premium SSD. It's just a test server. So you can see here it actually does say this is best for dev and test. Um, so we'll go with a standard SSD for that and just leave the rest of the default options. Virtual network. We want to choose the VNet that we've just created, which is the start corp. And we don't need a public IP like I was just saying, so we can get rid of that. We're just going to keep a basic network security group because we don't need to edit any of the default rules that are in place. And again, we don't need anything public. I will tick just delete the NIC when the VM is deleted anyway, just in case we get rid of it means it's not hanging around. In terms of management, everything here can be left as the default. We don't need to make any changes. Um, and monitoring, we don't need any boot diagnostics just because it's a test VM. The advanced settings, there's nothing that we'll need to do here, but there obviously there are a bunch of benefits to going through here and playing around with the settings. For example, in VM applications, uh, one thing that we like to do is the RMM that we deploy to customers. When any VMs are built, the application is picked up and the RMM is installed from the get-go, which is always beneficial to have. But yeah, we don't need to make any changes to the advanced settings and we're not going to be putting any tags on here so we'll just go to review and create and hopefully the validation passes which it has so now we can create that machine although i've just noticed the security type is trusted launch i'll change that to standard review and create and there we go right let's get that made again 
virtual machine creation. It will only take a couple of minutes and then it will power itself on ready for you to use it. In the meantime, we can look to go and set up Azure Bastion. What you want to do is go into your virtual network that you've just created and you can see that Bastion is under the settings on the left. In here, you can either deploy Bastion automatically, which will deploy it with these settings um, and naming conventions. But if we configure it manually, it gives us the ability to name it what we want and make any changes that we want to make. So the resource group will create a new one for Bastion. Okay, that in terms of naming convention, again, just have an abbreviation at the start to make it obvious what it is and usually put that in with your type of group or subscription along with your location. We'll leave the region tier and instance count as the default and then virtual network. Obviously, we want to choose the one that we've just made, which is a start corp. You can see automatically it's picked up the subnet Azure Bastion subnet because it has the name filled in. If we were to have not configured that subnet prior, then it wouldn't have let us actually progress here. We do also need it to have a public IP if we just put in here again have an abbreviation at the start to define what it is and from there that is the simple setup for you bastion we'll just leave the default features here we only need to be able to copy and paste through so for review and create that should give us a past validation and now we can create bastion that seems to take about five to ten minutes to get running before that works so we'll go check on the virtual machine just make sure that that is running and the provision has succeeded which it looks like it has there aren't any errors i think we're happy there so we're just waiting on bastion we interrupt our program to bring you this important message Today, the sponsor is Pepsi Max Cherry. <sighs> this is uh, the cloud lag. Enjoyable cloud lag. What is that? It's a term that we have generalized. If you were to do something in an on-prem environment, you don't have to wait for it because there's not back-end resources that need to do them things. You can build it and it's just ready. Whereas cloud lag, because you're doing things in a public cloud, you've got to wait for other resources to build them for you and do whatever background shenanigans for lack of a better phrase there are so yeah there's cloud log if you want any more information or detail on the settings within the creation of your virtual machine then you can go to this video here still waiting on this bastion La -da -da -da. we return you now to your regularly scheduled program there we go six minutes later deployment has succeeded exciting stuff so you can go straight to the resource and from here you can do your own sessions but the easiest way and the way that I like to do it is going directly via the virtual machine. So if we go on to start test or two that we just created, we can go to the connect setting and you can see here we've got an option for Bastion. By clicking use Bastion, it should pop up and ask us for the username and password we want to use. So because this VM has just been built, there'll only be one account and it'll be the local administrator account that we created during the process, which obviously ours was called starkadmin.local. Authentication type, obviously we want to use the password for it, but you can obviously go and store passwords in a key vault and just use them from there for the purpose of this i'll just type it in um, and then open a new browser tab and connect of course we've got a pop-up locked so we'll allow that through and connect again then you'll see that will log straight onto the vm so you can see that the bastion session has opened so i'll just allow that through remote networks and we are now on a virtual machine that was created just quickly show you that the vm has internet access through edge let's see what's on the news just to test internet access, we'll go to bbc.co.uk. And to watch. The mood is tense. I have been on some serious, serious reports, but nothing quite like this. There's I some shenanigans going on right there. So <laughs> I'll just go to fast.com instead. There we go. We've got some good speeds. So you can go to fast.com, show that we've got internet access and, you know, we're getting close to a gig on the VM, um, which is pretty good considering it's just a B tier. So just to recap, we have now created a virtual network, virtual machine and deployed Azure Bastion. We've proved that you can connect to that virtual machine via Bastion and that it has internet access via the VNet that you've deployed. Some of what we've gone through today is actually covered in the AZ104 Microsoft Azure Administrator exam. For example, the basic virtual network build that we've done will be covered under the configure and manage virtual networking section of your exam and the virtual machine build comes under the deploy and manage compute resources them two sections cover about 40 percent of the exam so if you get really familiar and comfortable with the concepts of virtual machines and virtual networks then you'll be on your way to passing that and become an azure administrator if anything in this video didn't make sense or you have any questions then feel free to re-watch it again at half speed if you still have questions then feel free to drop us a comment letting us know that you've watched it at half speed and we'll get back to you make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one we have <laughs> <laughs> laughing at the half speed thing. <laughs> Prepare myself so I can say that with a straight face. <laughs>